Hello community, isn't this little sheep adorable? Today we got Dolly 2 from the company Databricks. It is a new LLM, but a very special LLM, and I will show you in a second if you want to have the facts. It has a new PyTIA 12 billion parameter models, and it uses a complete new open source dataset of 15 case generated by Databricks. So here we go. This is the article here by Databricks, Free Dolly Introducing the World's First Truly Open Instruction Fine-Tuned LLM. Those are the orders, Databricks, and it is amazing. Today is April the 13th, and we have a new model. So, what is so special about it? It is the first open source instruction following large language model that is fine-tuned on a Databricks human staff generated instruction data set. You know this from my last movies. Databricks licensed this data set for research and commercial use. We have a very beautiful license. You can use it for your commercial activities. You just have to give credit to Databricks. And it is based on a really new pre-trained Eloita AI model called Pythia 12 billion parameters, which itself was pre-trained on the very famous data set, the pile. Here you have the GitHub and the article for the research. So again, we have a new LLM model, Pythia 12 billion trainable parameters, pre-trained on the pile. And then Databricks and more than 5,000 Databricks employees during the month of March and April of 2023, created more than 15,000 high quality, human generated prompt response pairs, specifically designed for instruction fine tuning of large language model. And how they did this, they set up a contest within the company and I don't know if all 5,000 Databricks employee participated, but what a beautiful idea to use your stuff to create here a high quality data set. So let's have a look at this data set. Databricks has had here seven very specific tasks that it's analyzed and said, this would be great if we have some high quality data set on those seven specific tasks. So the first is open question and answer. There might be no correct answer and other it requires drawing on knowledge from the world at large. Then we have a closed Q&A. Then we extract some information from Wikipedia. But remember, it has to be a human written response. So somebody has to sit down and type in the response after having read an article of Wikipedia. The same if you summarize now the information for this annotators provided a passage from Wikipedia and we are asked to distill it in a short summary. Then we had the task of brainstorming. This task asks for open-ended ideation and for an associated list of possible options. For instance, what are some fun activities I can do with my friends this weekend? And a human had to sit down and type quite a long response. And this was important to have a long response. Then of course, the classical classification task. Annotators were asked to make judgments about class membership. For example, a list of animals, list of minerals, list of vegetables, you know this. And then something, this is great creative writing. You would ask here staff members to write a poem or a love letter. And if you know, if you ask a mathematician or a theoretical physicist or a computer scientist to write a poem, my goodness, we're in for some treat. <laughs> but amazing that the company sit down and provided us, the community, with this data set. So give you here one concrete example. And you know this. This is our instruction-based fine-tuning data set. I have an instruction. I have an input. The instruction tells me, give me a list of the main complaints in the customer support ticket. This is here our input and do not write a reply, but just give me a list of the complaints. And the response generated then that the system should generate 
but for the training data set a human wrote, customer is unhappy about battery life, camera quality of a specific product. So these were the training data sets that the human created and that the machine was learning to learn from. And this, as you can see here, is a summarization task. Now, if you want to have here all 15,000, they are available for you on GitHub user content, Databricks Labs, Dolly Master Databricks, Dolly 15K, JSON Long. Just show you here from four categories. We have the category Close Q&A, Open Q&A, category Brainstorming, and category Information Extraction that you see how the data, the instruction data look like. So instruction is, when did Virgin Australia start operating? The content or the input like before, it is an Australian Airlines, yes, 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 yes. And the response is comment service on August 2000 as Virgin Blue, I mean, yes, yes, yes. So you see, this is exactly instruction input output. If you remember, I showed you in the Alpaca data set that sometimes if in the instruction, the object that we inquire is already defined, so we do not need the field context because the information of the context is already in the instruction. We only have instruction with the object built the headquarter. So we have no content, no input, as it we call it in the Alpaca data set. And the response was John D. Rockefeller, and this was a category from an open question. The same we can have in brainstorming. Why mobile is bad for human? We are always engaged one phone, which is not good, on a phone, which is not good, I suppose. And then, of course, you have here instruction for information extraction. So you, the instruction given is what is process mining? Then you have here the information about process mining and the response that the system learns as yes, one sentence. So it is very similar to what I showed you with the Alpaca data set. Now, as I told you, here we are, GitHub Databricks. Here with Dolly, here you have Databricks Dolly 15,000 instruction data sets, JSON. It was uploaded yesterday. The README is not yet finished 16 hours ago, but we have here an open and commercially, for commercial use, available instruction data set. Now, the model, the LLM, is brand new, 3rd of April 2023. This is it. Fitia, have a look at it. We are just going to use it. And if you go to Hugging Face, as you can see, four hours ago, the Databricks Dolly version 2 12 billion parameter model was uploaded. And we're going to use this model now. I show you now the code that you can use it. Or if you have a smaller model, here we have the Dolly version 2 2.8 billion parameter four hours ago. So we have here the questions and we have here the trained model on Hugging Face available. So let's jump into our Jupyter Notebook and let's code it. So here we go and here we install Dolly 2 on a free cool of Notebook. At first pip install, accelerate and transformer, of course. Then we generate some text. We have here the pipeline when we load the model Databricks. Dolly version 2, the 12 billion trainable parameter model. We have here BrainFloat 16. And our device map is auto. This is our very simple command. And then we will say, okay, go. And we hope that when we execute generate text, explain to me the difference between nuclear fission and nuclear fusion, we will get an answer from Dolly 2. You are here live. We are 81% loading 23 gigabyte of our Dolly 2. 12 billion trainable parameter model. So quite impressive. But since we are not using a GPU, we might have luck using a brain float 16. So it's happening now. 23.6, 23.7, done. And can we run it on a collab or we have to switch to Databricks? Because Databricks notebook, this is what it was supposed to run. 
So let's see what's happening. Now our system RAM will explode and we will crash heavily. So let's see what's happening. System RAM is not able to cope with this amount of data, 12.1 and crash. So here we go, 5.7 gigabyte in less than a minute. Yeah, that's okay for me. And we can do this. Now I do have a feeling that brain float will not be supported on our free Tesla T4. I hope we have a Tesla T4. I didn't even check because it's more or less standard nowadays, but let's see. So we just maybe have to go from a B float to a pure float 16. And let's see, six gigabytes. So now there should be no problem with system RAM because as you've seen before, with a 12 billion trainable parameter model, our system crashed because we used all, up all available RAM. Unbelievable. So here we go. 5.6, yes, done. And now B float error. I bet we have a B float error. Show me. Do we have a B float error? Yes, no, maybe. Could be. Theoretically, possibly. My goodness, do something. Thinking. Still thinking. Undecided yet. Should I calculate it or not? Ah, it's a Thursday. I don't know if I want to calculate this today. Maybe I'll wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow is a much nicer day. Could somebody please move anything? Oh, system RAM. Thank you. System RAM is here. Tokenizer. Tokenizer map. Ladies and gentlemen, we are operational. We are operational. And we crush now with GPU RAM. I bet you. We're gonna crash now with GPU. No, 6.5, we are stable. Unbelievable. 17, 19, 20 seconds in. System is calculating. T5 is at about 40%. 60% are still asleep. Unbelievable. Yes, we have an answer. We have an answer. Nuclear fission occurs when two atoms combine for a large atom and a really large amount by applying nuclear fission. Fusion. Nuclear fusion is used in star core solar panels to produce tritium for nuclear weapons. Unbelievable. So you see, we're operational. I can't believe it. Forget the rest. Yeah, there's performance limitations and they tell us it's not state of the art generative model. It is still under development. It was just released four hours ago. We know it is this here really. Yeah? And if you would like to run it with your Instruct Pipeline Databricks Dolly version 2 12b, you go to Instruct Pipeline Python file and there's your Python file if you want to have the pipeline yourself. But otherwise, I would say, ladies and gentlemen, this one, it is fantastic. We have now Dolly 2.0 and it runs with a 2.8 billion parameter model on our Colab notebook. Have a look, play around with it. It's so nice to have finally an open source model. I say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I see you in my next video.